Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as the King of Kings. We acknowledge your presence in our midst because we know you pray for us. Thank you for our faces also being brought here, led by the Honorable Minister, Lord Sweet and his own tribe. Thank you for this time together. We pray that as we all know, it will be for further progress of our part of the country, here of the whole country. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your provision and protection all the way. May we walk in the light of your way, that it may be well with our children. Bless all our people everywhere to the glory and praise of your name. We ask in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> May please be seated. Okay. Your Excellency, once more, like I mentioned earlier, we want to formally welcome you to the palace here. We know we are not a newcomer. Like you said when you just came in, you said you're back again. Because we didn't know that in our morning period, preparatory to this coronation, we visited this palace. Very one of your official functions, the chief is to this place here. We thank you for the minute necessary to come back here. You are welcome with members of your entourage. And gladly, we will introduce our chiefs to the present here, so that you know who is who. And by the time you leave here, I'm sure you have a very brief knowledge of the workings of this place. On the right, we have Chief Johnson, a machine leader, the Yashere of Wari. Okay, Your Excellency, you are welcome. We have Chief Gabriel Awala, the Uwangwe of Wari Kingdom. Okay, Your Excellency. We have Chief Kofi Edomi Kate, the Abolujian of Wari. Okay, Your we have Chief Brown Mene, the Ogulusa of Wari Kingdom. You're welcome. We have Chief Dr. Roland Orichejafo. I'm sure you know him very well. He's a former Minister of State for Defense. We also have Chief Dickin, Dr. Charles Ikobi. Chief Dickin, Dr. Charles Ikobi. Yeah. You're welcome. We have Chief Madam Rowling Oriche Jaffo, the immediate senior sister to my papa, Ayo Oriche Jaffo. We are all Oriche Jaffos, Oriche Jaffos all around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we have Chief Edwin only the Abarame of Warriki Law. Uh, we have Chief <coughs> Chief Malagami Akbeto, the Obaloye of Wari in Law. Oh, yeah. We have Chief Robinson, Chief Barrister Robinson Ario, the Ekogo of Wari Kingdom. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have Chief Eugene Abidemi Ikomi, the Secretary of the Wari Council of Chiefs. On your right, we are jealous that it's that way with you. But, uh, <laughs> with the express permission of His Majesty, we will allow him to be with you today. After we should come back. Chief Emmanuel Nesijolami Udwana, the Alema of our Kingdom. Yes, yes. 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 And uh, we have members of the some members of the royal family present there. The immediate younger brother to His Majesty is also there, Mr. Tuju and Miko. Mr. Prince Tuju is here with us. We have uh, Tudu and Miko, Franklin, and uh, Mr. Bensi on Waje, one of our big time contractors in the state here. They are present here to receive you this afternoon. Uh, not the list. Um, Chief, is it? Um, Chief Solomon Arenika, the director of Palace Protocols. Once more, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you sincerely. Uh, we know you very much. We have heard of you so much. When you were governor of Akwaibo State, there's a name we used to call you the Uncommon Transformer. Maybe when your chief of staff is doing the introduction, so we have more to say. You are very much welcome. Why doing the rundown of introductions? 
I deliberately left your younger brother here to, be, to just last engineer Toyo for Mashuri, who served in the NDDC as a former executive director of projects. This year with us. Thank you. At this point, Your Majesty, Your Excellency, I will therefore hand over the microphone to distinguished Senator Gosul Akbadi for your questions. You are welcome once more. Let me say that at the coronation ceremony, I was very well represented. I had a delegation that was led by the acting managing director of the Niger Transport Development Commission. We were assigned as ministers to another duty. And then, of course, we watched the glamour, the magnificence, the show of history, and our work. I don't know what the, what the sparkling reality of the Ishebiri kingdom and its beauty on television. Whoever was handling it must have been handling it from a uh, from a little place. <laughs> because we watch even the good regalia. And all of us were shouting, is this something in the Niger Delta? Some people asked me in the in the in Kano, in Bichi and other places. So, so can any good thing come from Nazareth? And I said yes. They talked about the magnificence, the dressing, the comportment, and at the same time, the handsomeness of the new king of Ishegiri and Niger Delta. And they concluded that the oracles have spoken, and they have spoken well. I don't know how many of us would be privileged, but I know on their 10th anniversary, on the throne, we shall be there. Yeah, right. And many some of us may end up being there when you celebrate your 50 years on the throne. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope we will still recognize you by that time. <laughs> because 50 years from today is a very long time. But again, okay, there is something you did that was then very remarkable and now very shocking. The Oluhi elect that I met a few weeks ago is no longer the same as the rule of Wari Kingdom that is there. So we have a poor shape. No longer the same. I don't know what kind of school they put you through because I've seen I was I was very very observant. I watched the Council of Elders and I've seen very eminent Nigerian very experienced Nigeria, very disciplined Nigeria. And that is why this kingdom stands out in the Niger Delta region. I would have said it in private, but let me say it publicly. So long as you continue having God as your greatest counselor, and at the same time having this dominant Nigeria advising you, with the wisdom and experiences given to them by God, you can never go wrong. Amen. Yes, my brother, Elema, you have told me a lot from day one, he's two times, and he's still standing time to see him. Congratulations. Yes, he's not a good time. You see, it takes two, three, four people to maintain a generation. It doesn't have to be everywhere. So I'm very proud of your support. to should give the kingdom, it should give the nation, and by education, Niger Delta region. And your loyalty to your king, which you have told me is correct. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Th
Jésus tourne et tourne. Mais tu vas y aller, il y a ça. Et vous, ma foi, est prise. Allez, que le bâton, ça va vite faire. Ça va vite faire. Mais, mais, c'est. Le bourreau n'a pas compris. Il a fait des verres. I was totally represented and I was not respected. So I didn't even expect to see the council members. I just said, I must come and pay my respect to the king. And also to re-establish not just our brotherliness, but my loyalty to the crown. I know I'll get directives from you before I leave. As Minister of Nigeria's Artificial Delta, on what and what and what must be done for the Kingdom. Thank you. So to assure you that from, is it, uh, is it for the, for the road? Huh? What is it for the road? The other road. The one that is very important the to you. The, 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 the one with the long bridge and all that. And we are going to start in the village in September. <laughs> In addition to a lot of other facilities that we are going to do, then that's the extra also that I'm talking about. So, as the ruler of the kingdom, and then the king of, uh, I would say, one of the most important kings in Niger Delta region, our job is to support you to succeed. From the infrastructural aspect, we will support you to succeed. But most especially, you will also help us with what you have already started, your spirituality. You recall that shortly after your coronation, you handed over the entire holy kingdom to God Almighty. You made pronouncements. You cancelled all causes if they existed that occurred in the past as a result of how other king was having treated. People were watching. And you spoke with the authority given to you by God shortly after the crown was placed on your head. You were very touched. You see, I succeeded in that Bible. It was sometime in 1967, 1968. Some politicians mischievously wanted to reign after the war. So they arrested a lot of prominent citizens of the state and called them Kabutwa, handed them over to soldiers. Some of them were tied to cars and driven on the road on their necks and neck cut off. So we have a place that we call uh, 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 what do you call that place? Uh, Revolution. Revolution. So it's just a use human beings to do the show. And most of them were innocent. Those that came from abroad and became professors, a particular politician saw it as an opportunity to use a section of the army. I don't want to name. We had like the Nigerian army, we had the Afghan army. They eliminated a lot of politicians and killed so many of them unjustly. I don't know one particular community before the man died. He was in the United States for about 25 years. He came home and built a fantastic house and then was started factory. He now to employ his people. He was shouting, then he said, if this is what I'm rewarded with, I place a cost on this uh, community. That less shall be your portion. Every, every local government chairman that attempted to put electricity in that, uh, that government. You see that you're impeached shortly after you sign the contract, or yeah, all of a sudden you die of a heart attack. So when I became a governor, I looked into those issues. Many of those families have gone abroad. They ran away after their parents were killed. And I said, no, they will need for us to come to God and to make sure that their peace rests in place. To organize a major, major, major event we went to the stage. It was very solemn. And we did that ceremony. We counsel all those causes. We appeased the souls and the spirits of the dead. 
We pray for God's forgiveness for the sins committed by our ancestors and the rest forget us for what I may call on common transformation of our fighting. So today, I join voice with you and with your elders to pronounce our common transformation of awakening. I said I must come and let you know that that spiritual atonement that you did by calling on God to assist you, that God will continue to be with you. Amen. God will be with your people. Amen. And your people are my people. By implication, God will be with Naked Dantan again. You have honored God even here when prayers were to be said. You took the crown given to you by God off your head and placed it on your chest in order to give honor to God. Because you know that everything belongs to Him. And you stood up. How many kings will do that? Please do not depart from the same road. You have come with a mission, and that mission is not just to enrich your people, not just to prosper them, but to take them back to God. Because any unity with God cannot result in a common transformation. I have witnessed that myself. May God Almighty guide you, protect you. Amen. Protect your family, Amen. protect your council, Amen. and protect your kingdom. Amen. In Jesus' name. Then for the rest of us who are here, I want you to know that loyalty to your king, what you wish him is what will come to you. Amen. If you wish him good health, good health will be your portion. Amen. And the portion of your children. Amen. You wish him happiness, happiness will be yours. Amen. We have not seen anybody that has asked the father for a loaf of bread and the father gave his stool. God is like that. If you don't want, if you don't love good things, good things can never come to you. But I'm happy that you are all in unity and in one spirit with our king. Men are the servants of the president assigned to take care of the Niger Delta region is to re-emphasize that I work with you and other kings in Niger Delta region to ensure that we, we break the cost placed on NDDC, that NDDC should never go away. I know that when you break that day, the shackles of underdevelopment and then looting and corruption that prevented the NDDC without completing any major projects were all shut out. Yeah. <laughs> So the former ADP, I'm not saying we did not do well with your people. I'm only saying we did not complete the project. Maybe I completed the project, I will not mention the one I'm mentioning now. I will only have said congratulations that you were able to finish it. But we, we are going to work. I don't want to be a, uh, a guest to this uh, panel. I want to be a song to the panel. So, Your Majesty, I'm speaking at one of your songs, one of your subjects. I will continue to come here to get to start from the wisdom, to sit with you and share ideas on how we can move not just the Niger Delta but Nigeria forward. And I do know that God being on our side. And with the long brain that you are going to have, even my children will benefit from your wisdom. Amen. Congratulations. And may the Lord God Almighty protect you, protect your family. Protect the Holy Kingdom, protect the United States and Nigeria in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to listen to remarks from the two. Thank you very much. Your Majesty. Thank you. Honorable Minister, once again, you are very welcome. And your entourage, you are all very welcome. First of all, let me start by saying, we wholeheartedly welcome and accept you as one of our own. And I'm sure you probably would have heard that um, the former president just was here not too long ago. And without planning, I think it's it's interesting how things work out. That two prominent ambassadors, sons of the Niger Delta, came here today without orchestration. And it really gladdens my heart because I believe when the Niger Delta really functions, the rest of Nigeria will function. Not when, not when Lagos functions or when Abuja functions, when the entire Niger Delta is really fulfilling its potential outside oil and gas. You know, especially with our uh, our ports, when there is travel, when there is rules for communication and the accessibility, the economy of this nation will boom. So, as I said to His Excellency when he was here, what we are going to continually push promote from this palace is peace is unity, is prosperity. And we will not, as I said on the speech on Saturday, we are really drawing a line. We are not revisiting old wounds, old divisions, and old tensions that have existed. And I'm sure many on both sides can, they can justify why there should be divisions. But if we keep justifying it, and when good things come, we will not get off 10% of the value we should get from them. And uh, I was actually listening to a program today this morning where someone had said that they believe the most important problem in Nigeria was not insecurity, it was actually the economy. And I was discussing it with uh, someone in the room with me, and he, he, he emphasized what we said that when the economy is working, nobody will have time to engage in argument and criminality and all that. So all that we can do to encourage the economy to grow, we will do. If it's spiritual work, if it is to speak it into existence, we will do it. If it is to use our good office to um, re-educate our people, let their minds be ready to accept these things and to see ourselves in the United States as one people so that when these things come, we are not fighting, we are not clamoring, we are facilitating and encouraging. I believe a lot of our Niger Delta people who live in Lagos and Abuja will relocate to the Niger Delta. Because clearly there is no place like home. And so I am very happy to hear of these roads and these bridges that are going to commence later this year. I think it is a long time coming and we say truly welcome, welcome development. So uh, once again, you have our support. I want to encourage you and um, I want to encourage you that when things are being discussed at the highest level in this country, concerning the Niger Delta, please remember to count on us as an ally, as a firm support. You know, uh, please let the president know that as he communicates his vision and his um, plans for the Niger Delta, he has a staunch ally and supporter here that will help him bring that to pass. And uh, we shall give all the best, all the best to make sure that this is a reality. So, Thank you once again for coming. Really appreciate it.
and we look forward to seeing much more of you, whether it's in the Niger Delta, whether it's in Abuja, we look forward to seeing more of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, once more, we want to say a very big thank you for this visit. Um, one place, hold on, hold on, just hold on. Um, we, we didn't, uh, our expectations, uh, it's over fear. Because when you were coming, I remember mentioning to my chiefs, my Nukama I4 in the secret language. I said, you know how to talk very well. And you didn't disappoint us at all, at all. <laughs> you may not know me, sir. I was chief of staff to Dr. Emmanuel Dubai. I'm hosting you once or twice in the, the governor's lodge. That was uh, the first privilege of seeing you talking. And uh, the most beautiful part of the statement we have had as Chekere people is that the course that has been placed on Coco in the road has been removed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I didn't know he was going to 